on March 21st, 2005, Germany's prestigious I4 Institute at the University of Munich published a research report according to which more technology at school can have a detrimental effect on education and computers at home can harm learning. Yes, you heard correctly, and it is a prime demonstration of what came to be known as the Solo Paradox. Named after the Nobel laureate in economics, it was stated by Solo this way. You can see the computer age everywhere these days, except in the productivity statistics. The venerable economics magazine, The Economist, in its issue dated July 24, 1999, quotes the no less venerable Professor Robert Gordon, one of America's leading authorities on productivity, according to the magazine. Page 20. The productivity performance of the manufacturing sector of the United States economy since 1995 has been abysmal rather than admirable. Not only has productivity growth in non-durable manufacturing decelerated in 1995-99 compared to 1972-1995, but productivity growth in durable manufacturing, stripped of computers, has decelerated even more. What should be held true? The hype or the dismal statistics? The answer to this question is of crucial importance to economies in transition and economies in general. If investment in information technology, IT, if investment in IT actually retards and slows and decelerates growth, then it should be avoided, at least until functioning marketplaces, um, a functioning marketplace is in place to counter the growth suppressing effects. The notion that IT retards growth is counterintuitive, not to say shocking. It would seem that, at the very least, computers allow us to do more of the same things only faster. I don't know, typing, order processing, inventory management, production processes, number crunching, they're all tackled more efficiently by computers, aren't they? Added efficiency should translate into enhanced productivity. Put simply, the same number of people can do more, can do faster, can do more cheaply with computers than without them. And yet, reality begs to differ. Two elements are often neglected in considering the beneficial effects of information technology. First, the concept of information technology comprises two very distinct economic entities. An all-purpose machine, universal machine, <laughs> the personal computer, plus its enabling applications and a medium, the Internet. Capital assets are distinct from media assets and are governed by different economic principles. And so they should be managed and deployed differently. Massive double-digit increases in productivity are feasible in the manufacturing of computer hardware. The inevitable outcome is an exponential exposition, explosion in computing and networking powers. The dual rules which govern information technology, Gordon Moore's uh, law, which is a, a doubling of chip capacity and computing prowess every 18 months, and Metcalfe's law, the exponential increase in a network's processing ability as it encompasses additional computers and nodes. Well, these two laws put together also dictate a breathtaking pace of increased productivity in the hardware and software aspect or aspects of information technology. This has been duly detected by Robert Gordon in his uh, essay as the new economy rendered the productivity slowdown obsolete. But there's a caveat. For this increased productivity to trickle down to the rest of the economy, a few conditions have to be met. The transition from all technology 
rendered obsolete by computing, to new technologies, must not involve too much creative destruction. The costs of getting rid of old hardware, software, of altering management techniques, getting rid of legacy application, adopting new, new management techniques, uh, I don't know, shedding redundant manpower, searching for new employees to replace the unqualified or unqualifiable, installing new hardware, installing new software, training new people in all levels of the corporation. These costs are mind-bogglingly enormous. But in this cost must never exceed the added benefits of the newly introduced technology, at least in the long run. And this is the crux of the debate. Hence the gist of it. Is information technology more expensive to introduce, to run and to maintain than the technologies that it so confidently aim, aims to replace? Will new technologies emerge in a pace sufficient to compensate for the disappearance of all technologies. As the technology matures, will it overcome its childhood maladies, a lack of operational reliability, bad design, non-specificity, immaturity of the first generation of computer users, absence of user friendliness, and so on and so forth. Moreover, is information technology an evolution or a verit veritable revolution? Does it merely allow us to do more of the same, only differently? Or does it open up hitherto unheard of vistas for human imagination, entrepreneurship, and creativity? The jury is still out. The signals are still mixed about this. Hitherto, information technology did not succeed to do to human endeavor what electricity, the internal combustion engine, and even the telegraph have done. It is also not clear at all that information technology is a universal phenomenon, suitable to all business climes and mentalities. The penetration of both information technology and the medium it gave rise to, the internet, is not globally uniform, even when adjusting for purchasing power and even among the corporate class. Developing countries should take all this into consideration before making any long-term infrastructural decisions. The economies of developing countries may be too obsolete and too high bound, too poor and too badly managed to absorb yet another critical change in the form of an IT shockwave. The introduction of information technology into an ill-prepared market or corporation can be and often is counterproductive and growth retarding, as Solo had found out. In hindsight, 40 years hence, we might come to understand that computers improve our capacity to do things differently and more productively. But one thing is becoming fast uh, clear. The added benefits of information technology are highly sensitive to and dependent upon historical, psychological, cultural, and economic parameters outside the perimeter of the technology itself, outside its remit. When the technology is introduced, how it is introduced, for which purposes it is put to use, and even by whom it is introduced, these largely determine the course of its introduction, and therefore the technology's feasibility and contribution to the enhancement of productivity. Developing countries are not yet there. And so this is an issue that we need to we need to contemplate before we make decisions about infrastructure. Information technology is 90% hype and 10% delivery. To paraphrase Thomas Edison.